I'm gonna make a classic French omelet with a little cheese, very little, because huh. we wanna rack up the, the, the budget, uh, and a salad, a side salad. Okay. Love that. Okay, okay it sounds and I think this is, it's I think this is great for brunch, for lunch, and for like late night with a glass of champagne. Simple vinaigrette, Sonny. You're gonna make salt, pepper, shallots, vinegar, mm -hmm. and chives, whisk, and leave. Okay, set. all right. Secondly, we have eggs. So um, how many am I serving, six? Four? Yeah. Four is four. Four to six, four. okay. So I have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight eggs. These aren't that expensive. One of the things that's wonderful about eggs is they've actually gone down in price in the last 30 years. It's kind of remarkable, yeah. and you have a huge uh, ability to choose the kind of egg you want. There's actually a chasm of price, right? Yeah. You can see a dozen of eggs for one thirty-nine, and another dozen of eggs, same size, Amazing. for like four bucks. So pay attention when you're buying your eggs. Okay, so I'm sure. just going to, uh, here's that, my whisk, I use yours. You're just going to whisk these. Uh, thing about eggs, you'd like them room temperature when you're making an omelet. You're going to add a, a little bit of salt, not too much, and some pepper. I love that you saw the eggs from the get-go. Yes, People you have to. talk so much about you have this. To. You gotta get that salt in there early. It doesn't do anything to affect the now, texture. There's a lot of ways to make a omelet, but a lot of people add stuff like cream, crumb, fresh water, nada. No okay? water? Nada. Pan, butter, bubbling. You're gonna take the eggs, preferably room temperature, and put them on the pan, medium to low. This is not a egg scrambling demonstration of speed. It's just a slow process. To this, really important, you're gonna add some chopped cold butter. Oh, and the reason butter, why we do it, really, really it's not. It's, it's just fancy. Chopped. The reason why I do it, it's not to be fancy, it helps to keep the protein soft so it doesn't get hard, so we have a really soft omelet because That's it melts why generously. when you get eggs out in a restaurant, they taste so much better than yes, when you make them. Yes, because it's a soft omelet. <laughs> so as you see, I'm just using this on medium heat, I'm scraping it down with a plastic spatula in a good, uh, non-stick pan. You want to have a pan that's non-stick, preferably. And some of the pans, they don't last very long, so you just want to get one that lasts or get a new one for this particular demonstration. Now, GC, we all give you a hard time for not being the most budget-friendly in your current life, but that's not exactly how you grew up. So I, I know that you know how to make a dollar uh, stretch. We, we, we grew up, and my mother made leftovers probably four times a week, yeah. uh, to the point where sometimes we didn't know what the original dish was you know, where it came from. But it was just delicious and yummy. Like that pepper dish, like, brought me back. That was just yummy. I love the way you're really making us see that an omelet begins kind of the way a scramble does. Yes. Because you've got to cook mm -hmm. the heart of the eggs before you build that. that yeah, so crust. I'm just moderating the heat. You can see the heat is not too high. It's high enough to cook, but I'm really taking care of the omelet to make sure it doesn't get, like, all on the bottom and stick. So I'm just pushing it off, pushing it toward the center. And now I'm making, I could go either a scrambled egg or an omelet at this point, all right? Now, if I was gonna go scrambled egg, I would take a whisk. How you doing over there, Sonny? I'm done. Okay. I would take a whisk and start to whisk these into like small curds, but I I'm not gonna do whisk. that. With some scramble. And if you're gonna do a whisk in a nonstick pan, make sure it's a plastic whisk. That's right. Okay. Now, do you like Can to... I taste that? Do you ever yeah, eat... what do you think? I made it salty like you wanted. It's do gotta be salty. Eat... Do you ever eat like a loaded omelet, Jeffrey? You know, with like 10 toppings Excellent. in it? No. <laughs> He's not no, going to the diner. No, just because, I mean, the, the egg is the beauty of the omelet. You know, when you start putting stuff in an omelet, you lose the omelet. I agree. Oh. You don't want to do that. So as you can see, now we're starting to get the foundation of the omelet. And again, it's scrambled eggs at this time, so let's not forget right. it. But you see how soft it is? That's because of the cold butter that we added into it. The butter is really like the mediator for the texture. It almost stops the omelet from not becoming fabulous. So at this point, you know, you want to tell, okay, do I want a soft omelet bavers? Do I want a medium omelet, which is a little bit more cooked? I like it soft. So at this point, I'm going to shut the heat off. And then I'm going to add the cheese. This is Gruyere cheese. You can what? Gruyere cheese. It's not expensive cheese. It's not? That's Anytime expensive cheese is sold cheese. in that little area where using. they're all blocks. Look what I'm, look what I'm using. I'm using probably. Go ahead, Jeffrey. Make an it ounce. rain. I love it. An ounce and a half. Beautiful. <laughs> And just a touch of pepper. Probably go cheaper, love, just put I some love, Swiss, you know, some Swiss I love Swiss. the taste of pepper. So I'm letting this sit just for a second, and I'm letting the residual heat from the pan sort of come up and, like, kiss it a bit more, just to mm -hmm. finish the cooking. And if you did want to save money, you could use whatever cheese you got in your drawer in your of fridge. Of course, of course. So while that's just sitting there, I'm going to take my uh, beautiful <laughs> salad dressing. Sunny, thank you so much. It was You're very welcome. This is a really good dressing, and I tell people all the time it's a simple dressing. We love salad dressing. We always oh talk about it all God. the time. Love but I like a salad dressing. Need. I want it to be so vinegary, too. That's chive-heavy and shallot-heavy, because it's, mm -hmm. it's onions, really, that makes it great. So you can see this. Can you see how nice that is? So it's also so it. French. Yeah. French make the best salad dressing, the best. in my opinion. Mm -hmm.
That's a very expensive conversation y'all are having over okay, there. Okay, so I'm just gonna give this a general, this is bib or Boston, but see, I'm just using the lettuce, and I'm not cutting it up, and I'm not just damaging it. Mm -hmm. I want it to retain its shape, so when I put it on the plate, it's sort of decorative. Okay, I'm I think we're ready to go. Honestly, mesmerized. This is like a, this is like arranging flowers, mm -hmm. this dish. It is. No, so we're just gonna take that here. This is for the side, and I think when you bring this salad over to the table, it looks really beautiful. I'm hungry. You want to eat it. Mm -hmm. yeah, I want to eat it. It's making me so mm -hmm. hungry. Forget okay. the omelet. Forget mm -hmm. the omelet? Okay. Not Look at it, stacked up, all fancy. Yeah. Beautiful. You don't know you're on a budget when you're presenting this fabulously. Well, I mean, uh, you, you're actually having like four or five leaves each, so it's not like, can you take that from me? Yeah. You and also, I'm gonna okay. eat that whole bowl, let's be real. So you don't have to flip it, you don't have to throw it in the air. It's not a pizza. You just have to, <laughs> just have to take it like this, okay? And just roll it. So the heaviness of the omelet is gonna, it's gonna, make, it, it's gonna make itself, you see that? Oh. It's like a snowball rolling downhill. See how nice it is? It's soft. No brown. No brown, this, never. This is this is my everything. Jamais. Jamais, never. No brown. No brown. Jamais. And then you're just gonna take it like this That's and right. flip it onto the what? plate. Oh my god, so gorgeous. And one last, we're gonna take a little what I call shining butter, which is just soft butter. Oh, just, bien sûr. Oh, that. That's at least 25 cents right there. It is, but so what? It is worth it. it. Oh, that's gorgeous. So there you are. That's a French wow. omelet with a little salad. Beautiful. Wow. Wow. Please slice it up. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Gorgality. I love the way the cheese is 79.9% melted, but there's still the texture of that. Mm-hmm. Ooh. See that? Ooh. Beautiful. So, Katie, that's yours, and I'm gonna check Ooh. the price. All right, you ready? Yes. What was yours? Fifteen thirty-nine. Fifteen thirty-nine. Okay, you ready? Man. No way with that cheese. Ah. Uh, mm. Fourteen ninety-three. What? Cheesy. What? Comes in. What? Shaving off the pennies. Mm. Are you? Go. How did that happen with that cheese and the chives and everything else? One less else? egg. One less egg. You this know? is worth every penny, Look you guys. The Gruyere cheese that has such a wonderful nuttiness to it, and the melty and the eggs are so perfectly cooked and creamy. Oh my god! And then that salad dressing. The chive and shallots, that's what it's all about. Yeah, and it cuts the fat, right? And Ooh. a great lunch or late night. Homage to my mom, I'm making a shepherd's pie. Right? Okay, so Sunny's already starting. Again, very simple, humble ingredients. Potatoes, some milk, some sour cream, butter and eggs. Mm -hmm. She is ricing potatoes. Yep. The secret to this is they must be warm. Cooking them completely in salted water from cold. That's right. And you must cook them. There's nothing worse than an undercooked potato. Oh, yeah. oh my God. Unless you're going to fry them again. you got to really do it this way. And this is a ricer. This is a very, this is a fantastic machine. What this does is it lets the potato get to a state where you can mash it without getting gummy. Exactly. And that's the biggest problem. No, no, no. Yeah. OK? So to that, she's going to add warm milk, sour cream, okay. warm butter. This is not clarified butter, just regular melted butter, mm -hmm. a good amount of salt and pepper, and two egg yolks. And these are gonna be added at the end so they don't cook. And we're just gonna get them all in, nice. whipped together. All right. Okay, and these got, are just two it, egg chef. yolks. You got it? Got it. Okay, so right here I have some onions and a casserole with rosemary. You can add garlic if you want. I just like the onions. And I'm gonna get them almost to the point where they're like kind of crusty. <laughs> Okay, and then I'm gonna add ground lamb. We eat a lot of lamb uh, in my household growing up. Uh, it was, back then it was really inexpensive. It was. So this is just ground lamb. You can use beef, you can use turkey, you can use whatever you want. Like I said, it's a casserole. What does that mean? It's a leftover. That's right. So yeah. go for it. And we have potatoes that will make every, anybody happy. I used to make this a lot of times in restaurants when I started to work in restaurants, and it was called hashi palmentier. What? Yeah. And this was staff meal, okay? Yeah. And this was staff, staff meal before. means, you know, all the chefs are cooking very fancy French food, and what do they want to eat at lunchtime? Not fancy French. Yeah, they want the opposite, hearty, yeah. right? Because you don't want what you're actually cooking all day. So this is very filling, and I just love it because it's just, it's just so satisfying. So. We're gonna get that, a little salt and pepper, let it go, caramelize, and this is what it looks like after about four or five minutes. It's all nice and brown here, okay? And to that, we're gonna add a little bit of flour, just to thicken it a touch, some tomato paste, and a little bit of sherry wine vinegar. 
Was this like something you'd, when you knew your mom was making shepherd's pie, you were excited to sit down at the table? Or was this like something, a shepherd's pie again? No, I can't wait well, to elevate she it. She would make I'm a lot of these. She would make a lot of casseroles. And it's not yeah. necessarily shepherd's pie. It's like anything in a casserole, this methodology. So it could yeah. be could be potato with cabbage. She would make it with meatless. I didn't even know it was meatless. A casserole is so comforting. Oh, it's so comforting. It? it does take you right back to your childhood. Anything mashed potato. OK, how are you doing over there, son? Really good. I aggressively salted aggressively. it. Did you want pepper in this at all? Yes. OK. And to this, we're going to add some uh, pearl onions. Kind of fancy. You don't have to add pearl onions. I love onions. You can get the frozen kind. You can That's get the so frozen easy. kind. Some carrots and peas. You can add whatever frozen. you have again. So you and cooked those pearl onions before you put them in yes. and got a little color yes, on them? Yes, you don't have to, but I just did. Some parsley. A good amount of parsley. Really important. You guys know the difference between shepherd's pie and cottage pie? Mm -hmm. It's the oh. meat. What does shepherd's pie always have Lamb. in it? Lamb. And what does cottage pie have Beef. in it? Beef. Beef. Yes, exactly. So if you can take a look at this, you see we have, I mean, it, you know it's going to be good, right? You have the little vinegar, the tomato. The flour is gone, basically. It's, it's going to do its job in about two seconds when I add some stock. You can add water, chicken stock, beef stock, vegetable stock, anything just like that. And then the magic. Sonny's going to give us the, we're going to put this right on top. I'm going to bring this over here, Sonny, and we're going to. Yeah. Oh, I like it. You don't even have to get done. a casserole no, dish out. You trust me? I trust oh, you. my God. My Hold on. Chef. You got to trust me your sous chef. Taste. You Otherwise, do, but... you're going to be in the kitchen all day long <laughs> yourself. Yeah, it's just perfectly. Okay. Put the entirety of that on top. When I mean entirety, wow. this will serve 10 people. It's a great so, ratio. Jeffrey, let me ask you. Yes. This is your childhood favorite. Is it becoming your children's childhood favorite? <laughs> Unfortunately, they don't get things so homey. They do get homey stuff, but they, I haven't actually made this for them yet. But now I'm going to. Keep the tradition going. This is just beautiful. Sonny's just, look at Sonny. Wow. Well, I mean, it's meat and potatoes. It is meat and potatoes. I'm in my happy place, you All know right, you ready saying? to get really happy? Are you going to do your thing? I'm going to do my thing. Oh, yeah. I think I see what's coming. Melted butter. Oh, oh just, yeah. I, I, did, I got you hills and valleys. Should I have leveled it off better? No, it's fine. OK. Wow. Hills and valleys and Parmesan cheese. OK. Oh. Or any other cheese you have grated in the box. Doesn't really matter. American? Not American. <laughs> OK? <laughs> Could you open the oven for me? Yeah, I got you. No, 375. I'm starting to think about Bottom it. Bottom oven, please. 375 Hello. for at least 40 minutes. OK. OK. Going to get all nice and brown and take that one home. Yeah. There. there we go. <laughs> oh, look at that. Can you oh, see that? Stop it. Oh, stop wow. it. Stop. Wow. Stop. Wow. Wow. Stop. Right here. Oh. We sat in the right place. Oh. OK, you have hills and valleys. Ooh. Yeah, we know it's just painted kind of. Isn't that beautiful? It is. Look at that guy right there. Yes. That's like McKinley. That's K2. Oh my gosh, look at that. <laughs> that is gorgeous. Oh, so that's what it should look like a little parsley. Gorgeous. For you. Oh, for carrots always for reminds me of childhood. Oh man, I'm making this. This is very yes. simple. And the great thing is that the potato is fortified with those eggs. Mm, 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 so, mm. Extra little, you know, something, something. Mm. Gigi, only you could make a humble shepherd's pie. Oh, Tastes humble. like a million bucks. Oh, a million? Humble pie. This is Thank delicious. You. And the lamb really does make all the difference. It's good, the lamb. Because it's so rich. God. And then you add those creamy mashed potatoes to it. You get a little sweetness from the peas and carrots. Mm -hmm. Making my pasta salad with tomatoes, cucumbers, and grilled green onion crushed olive vinaigrette. Oh. Wowie. Into this very generously salted pot of generously salted water, I have put my, what is this, Jeff? Can you name that pasta? Fusilli. Fusilli, and I love this because this grabs. You need grabbing pasta. You I like fusilli for a pasta salad. So um, I'm going to take these grilled. I have some beautiful grilled scallions, nice and charred. We've been doing this all spring. I love this. Really, it's really fantastic. Our pasta is in. That's where the magic happens. This water has to be very salted, like the sea, because we are not using this water. If you were making a sauce in the pan, you would make it salty as broth. So when you added it, it would too, it wouldn't get too salty. So in this, uh, in this case, we're going to fully cook it to a real al dente, but really salty. Okay. Mm. Then we're going to make a vinaigrette. That's our that's our flavoring agent, a vinaigrette. What do we have? We have mustard. What else do we have, Jeff? Olive oil. Olive oil. And vinegar, Chardonnay vinegar. Mm. I like Little Chardonnay. Chardonnay vinegar. I like 50-50. I don't like three to one. I'm always very vinegary. Like I, I believe both of you are very vinegary as well. Mm. Okay, pasta's cooking. I have all my mise en place here. I'm going to chop up 
these beautiful scallions. So good. Oh. My gosh. Oh. Hot, hot. You can do it. We believe in you. This is just olive oil, salt, and pepper. Very simple. Oh. Oh, my God. Oh, heavens. Let's taste this. I think it's going to be fine. So this is what's going to flavor the, the pasta, plus everything else we're putting in. The pasta, strangely enough, doesn't need a lot of things for flavoring. A lot of dressings and mayo is too much dressing. It just over, over, overwhelms the pasta. In my ass, I know, I know you do. OK, so we're going to put our, all our stuff here. And then we're going to wait for our pasta to cook, because I want the pasta to really hit the vinaigrette and really soak up that vinaigrette. Because everything else is just going to go along for the ride, all right? Nice. So what do we have here? We have some Kalamata olives, some fresh dill, some fresh Italian parsley, and some provolone, which is hard mm. to leave alone, especially <laughs> when it's cut up. Some red onions and some tomatoes that I've lightly salted and some arugula. That's provolone. the ingredient. Provolone. Provolone. Wow. Mystery little addition there. Jeff, you love provolone. I love it. Shoot me. Very good. Excellent. Provolone Express, next up, my mouth. Jeffrey, I love that you're making this room temp. I love that you're dropping hot pasta into a vinaigrette so it absorbs everything. But I just love that cold elbow macaroni salad with mayo out of the fridge. That's in the deli case, right? It's in the deli case. From a deli guy, I am not a fan of deli-style mac salad or any type of pasta salad. I like this. This is how I make my pasta salads. Revelation. I'm with you. Revelation. Kev Katie, help me. I'm with you. Yeah, we're good. Here we go. That's we don't drain it. Just do the whole, okay. they call this the lazy method. Mm. Sammy the spider. Look at him go. Yeah. Yeah, and if you don't have like, one of those spiders, My get pasta one. salads are like one third pasta, two thirds salads. I don't like a lot of pasta ratio. A lot of people put a lot of pasta in just a little stuff. Another thing That's I all agree the pasta. with you on, Jeff. What I'm, is going I'm with on? you on that, Jeffrey, because I like a lot of stuff. Yeah. Olives, parsley, dill, provolone. Yeah, that's for you. Thank you. Just put it in my provolone <laughs> zone. <laughs> I guess since we don't agree with him on everything, we don't get any cheese. Onions. You guys, <laughs> you, don't, you didn't play it right. OK. And a lot of pepper. You got to have pepper. Pepper wakes everything up, especially pasta salad. And Alex is determining whether this, what this tastes like. Last yeah. thing, arugula. You're right. I really am. I'm doing a little math equation in my head. It looks great. I can smell it from here, too. So the hot. pasta is going to suck up all that. The warmth is going to slightly wilt the arugula, but I'm going to put some fresh on top so you have fresh and cooked. And that's the key, to me, to a real pasta salad that you will go back to every time. And it actually, all this mixing will put it to a temperature that's really ambient. So you'll be able to eat it. There has to be a balance between the green and the vinaigrette. And the pasta just is there to like beef everything up. Are you ready? I give a TV I shot. have to say, this is beautiful and fresh looking. Mm-hmm. Why do you want mayo? Your pasta salad will not look like this if you put mayo in it. Uh, you know what I'd like to do? I'd like to eat a bowl of macaroni salad with the mayo while looking at this. <laughs> I would be really happy. Why can't I, you just have both, you, you know? You can have both. But I recommend this for an outside picnic or an outside beautiful. alfresco dining. Well, here's the benefit of the no mayo with a salad like this. If you are traveling and you can't keep it cold, this will not go bad. That's what ice is for, Katie. But all right. <laughs> That's true, though. But so? A little safer in the hot summer heat, too. So delicious. That's gorgeous, Jeffrey. I'm mm -hmm. just busting your chops. The arugula and the olive, it's, like a, it's, it's almost like a niçoise salad. Mm -hmm. But that arugula really just jazzes it all up. I can smell the dill from here, which I love mm. with the idea of the salty cheese. So delicious. Mm. Today I am making a cowboy steak on the grill. And this is, this screams summer. And I so love this. When I do steak, this is what I cook. Because it feeds, I mean, it's gigantic. And I always get it about two inches. This is a ribeye on the bone. Really important to keep the bone on. Simply because Katie loves the bone. But I the, bone. the bone, what the bone does is it helps it stay intact on the grill. Very important. So. A couple of things. A ribeye is very expensive, but this feeds four to six people. It's fine. It really is fine. Unless you're feeding me. Unless I'm feeding you. And so, I would love help. to see you eat that whole yeah, steak. She Katie. will. Trust me. <laughs> so, you challenging me? No, I'm I, up for it. I love. To, I believe it. The skinny ones eat the most. <laughs> I love to eat uh, my steak outside with a salad, but uh, not just any salad. Watercress to me is one of those things that is sort of underappreciated. You see it, you walk by it. But in uh, a long time ago, every steak used to come. You know, remember a big clump of watercress on it. 
I'm sort of taking that to another level, so and I, I need like your help. I like how the grease gets into the salad it when it's on the plate. Mm. I'm making a really delicious vinaigrette here with uh, some shallots, mustard, red wine vinegar, salt, pepper, mm. and a touch of anchovy paste, all right? Mm. Oh, so, that adds so much flavor. Really good. Flavor. I love so that. we have some watercress here. I want you to pick some more watercress. Okay. Slice through some radishes, a little bit of fresh tarragon, and we're gonna dress that, all right? Great, well, my canines are watering. So all right, so we're gonna, it. so what we've done for this steak, it's really important, everybody. Listen to these tips, because it, it's the way to cook a proper steak. You want the steak medium rare from top to bottom. To get that, you have to pull the steak out of the refrigerator, let it come to room temperature at least 30 minutes before it hits that grill. All right, so what I've done overnight is I've salted it, both sides, put it on a rack, put it in the refrigerator, drying it out and uncovered so it really starts to season inside because there's a lot of steak here. I'm gonna season it slightly again, not too much because there's a lot of salt on there already. And this is a dry aged steak, which means we bought this 28 day aged. So that means the water has come out of it. Water equals weight. So you're actually buying a steak less heavy. So when you're paying a lot of money per pound, you're also getting more steak that's dried less weight. So it's actually not as expensive as you think. Okay. But it's much tastier because the flavor's concentrated. So we're gonna rub this here, and then we're putting on a, a two-pronged uh, attack to the grill. A very hot side, you're gonna talk about that later, and a not-so-hot side to cook it. So right now we're gonna take this steak, all rested, and just put it on the grill that's really hot. And after a while, it's gonna tell, when you go like this and it just comes up easy, it's ready to turn. It'll tell you. So the steak has four sides. One, two. two, very important. You must cook it on that side. That's the flap and the rib side. You need to cook it on that side. Three, and then four. So we're gonna go through that process. And we've had the steak started right here. And this is ready to go to the indirect side. And we're gonna let it cook there. And how long should it cook? 125 degrees. Do not press it, touch it, forget the thumb and all that stuff. Use this, the digital thermometer. I, I advise you not to use these. <laughs> no. These are okay, yeah. but they're not accurate enough. So get a digital thermometer, very inexpensive, 125 degrees. Take it out and rest it. It'll be spectacular, I promise you. Sunny. Yes. So Jeezy's got the grill set up perfectly for grilling a ribeye. Now we're going to get into some really cool grill tips for you. Is it indirect or direct heat? If you take a look into the grill right now, what I've got is the wood, or you could do charcoal, the chips that you soak or whatever, to one side. Usually what you'll do is when you start this fire, though, you start in the center with a pyramid, and then you move all of your action to one side. That's going to be your direct heat and then the side that has nothing on it that's indirect the perfect thing that you want to do on your direct heat side is stuff that cooks really fast or things that you want to get nice a sears on so your steak you can start it over here or like chicken with the skin side down on the direct heat but then once it's got the color move it over to the indirect heat so the inside of it cooks just as evenly as the outside but whatever you do just know where the hot spot is and where the cool spot is because every once in a while we have a flare-up you got to move things over love it Jeff, what's up with you over here? All right, I am doing the direct method, right? Okay. So we had our mound of coals. We're going to wait till they get totally covered in white ash. Mm -hmm. Then we spread them out in an even layer on the bottom here. That means you can cook your stuff hard and fast. You don't want to okay. slow cook anything on this because there's a lot of intense heat, as you can see. So this is perfect for getting that beautiful char on these burgers. Still juicy. You flip it when it's ready. You get that good caramelization. You can do those vegetables, like if you're doing zucchini or squash. I cut them in half. It's a lot easier to manipulate, a lot easier not to overcook. We got some beautiful asparagus with that char on there. Get that one right there, son. I saw one I wanted. That's all right. You take that. It's hot, though. This is real what's happening. <laughs> of course, great for sausages, hot dogs. When I cook my dogs on the grill, always line them up right perpendicularly. And once they char, don't put them all over. Just roll them. Nice. Right? Your hand, though? Well, OK. You know what? Don't this is burn man. yourself. <laughs> all right, so that's a nice little tip. Also, we have some skewered shallots here. We Love. put them, cut them in half. Don't worry about removing the chaff. It keeps it all intact. And we're going to use these in a little bit, right, G? Mm -hmm. Yes, we are. Look at that. Beautiful oh, look char. Look at that. That's that looks beautiful. That's the garnish really for good. the steak. Seasoned with a little bit of thyme, you salt, know. and pepper. These will go great with that steak. Yum. Yep. Yum. Look at that. Beautiful. And that's that color you're looking for. So that's the direct method, right? You want to make sure you're, you're keeping an eye on your food on this, because there's mm -hmm. some intense heat. This could get up to seven, 800 degrees. So wow. keep that in mind. OK, I'm coming over. I'm oh. coming over. <laughs> Where do you want this? Fantastic. Could you just uh, take them off the skewer and yes. arrange them right here? OK. Oh, off the skewer. Well, you can put them. Let's keep them on the skewer. They look beautiful. Them on the skewer. I'm on already the snacking on the radishes because I'm so hungry yes. from snow. Katie, it's Thank coming I soon. I can't take it anymore. Mm. Michelle is so good. It melts mm. in your mouth. And it's not as powerful or, or raw tasting as an onion. Mm -hmm. 
And the seasoning of the thyme and the olive oil is just spot on, and I'm telling you. I grilled those. Are we ready? <laughs> Are we ready? Okay, so we've taken a steak off the indirect heat, 125 degrees, right? Mm -hmm. It's rested up, it, it goes about five to seven degrees with a two inch piece of meat. Mm -hmm. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the bone off first, a little uh, steel first, and I am going to just take it down here. You just wanna go right along the bone. Oh, oh, oh. Favorite cut of meat, right? And I there. put that back just for a second. Yes. Just yes. for a second. Crisp it up. Please. And then watch this very important. You want to cut against the grain and not in two small pieces. A lot of people take the steak and they slice it very thin. Mm -hmm. And that's just like not what this needs. You need to feel it. It you has to have mouthfeel. Mouth yeah. You lose chew. everything. So I'm, I'm hearing things, but not really hearing them because <laughs> she's waiting for the thinking of Just get ready. Katie. So this when I tell you, happening. I'm going to have you uh, mix that uh, vinaigrette first. Now, see, I've rested this, how well it's rested. It's not bleeding all over the board, really important. Mm -hmm. So let's just take a look at this <laughs> and just look and slice. how evenly, how evenly it's cooked all the way through. What if you, Beautiful. what do you do with, yeah, if, if, if that rests a real long time, what do you do with all those residual juices? You can use them again, just warm them up. The salad dressing Get out of yes. Dodge Jeezy. That's what we do. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so hold on a second. We're just gonna take this here, maybe one little, uh... oh, that looks look good. Look at that. You help me out with that, uh, the end piece. And look, hardly any juices that come off this. We're gonna take a little of this juice here. Mm. Oh, that's oh right here. yeah. That is all gravy. Oh yeah, baby. All right. All right, can I dress the salad? You can dress the salad. So that's a medium rare, right? That's medium rare, but okay. see it's medium rare. If it's hold of a piece, it's a medium yeah. rare all the Beautiful. way through. Yep. Nice and gorgeous. It's gray on the end, and you're just gonna put this mm. here, toss it, and I, I suggest you taste this with your hands. This is yeah. perfect medium so rare. Can easy. I just get in there? Just hold on a second, hold on a second. What's happening? Is that what's happening? Wait, wait, someone wait, stole, wait, someone stole my room. Wait, 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 you're talking about it. Put that back there. All right. Where am I supposed to put it? Right on top. And there you go, Katie, let's see what you think. Come on, come on. Oh. Like I want to see salt on that, maybe. Do you need any salt? <laughs> okay, this is so cooked to perfection. Yeah, I heard. The taste of the salty meat, and then the vinaigrette here. This is unbelievable! Yay! <laughs> I need some private time with the steaks, and we'll be right back with green beans okay. four way. <laughs> Bucatini carbonara. So what I have here is my my pasta water is going, and I have bucatini. Bucatini is one of my favorite pastas. It really is thick spaghetti with a hole in it, almost like a, a fiber optic cable. You can yeah, actually see right through one. there, right? Yeah. The next step up from here is percatelli, which is, I know, a big favorite of yours. My favorite. So we have it down in salted water, and I'm gonna use some of this water. I have guanciale or pancetta. This is pancetta. Guanciale is uh, pork jowl. Uh, didn't have it. This is more readily available. And a little <coughs> olive oil, getting nice and crispy. It's almost ready and some cracked pepper. I added some pepper here. So we're mm. starting the carbonara. Uh, I'm not, it's not over. We're gonna add some more pepper later. A little bit of garlic to this. We're not gonna fry the garlic. Fried garlic smells good, but when it gets brown, it doesn't taste good. And I don't, it's not, it ruins the dish. So we're just gonna fry this here a little bit, turn it down to real, real low. And almost just off the heat, just let it sit and hang out, okay? We don't wanna cook that too much. And to that, I'm gonna add a touch of pasta water. See, it sounds weird, but this is what you. This is how you start. And what that's going to do is it's going to cement the cooking process of the pork. It's already cooked. It's done. I don't want it to cook anymore. But now I've gotten some starch from the bucatini in here. So that's really all there is to do. And if, if it goes down, you just put a little bit more in. Now all we have to do is wait for our pasta to cook and wait for our cheese mixture to come together. OK, so we have one egg. One yolk and two whole eggs. I'm sorry, one yolk and two whole eggs, OK? Just like that. All right. Into a bowl. And you can use bacon if you can't find panchata yeah, or panchale, right? I mean, absolutely. It's like thick bacon cut, not like not maple bacon, you know, something pretty. Panchetta is, is, is the is the belly, but it's not as smoky as bacon. Bacon no. is smoky, adds another flavor. Smoke is good, but sometimes it overpowers the cheese. So we're just gonna whip this up. Some cheese, Parmigiano, Reggiano, or Pecorino Romano, or both. I use both. Okay? Why? This, I just like the tang of the pecorino. And the, and the sort of age of the. So is this your is, is this your spin on a classic? Because you just mine. you led this all up into this is like the correct this, version. I made it so many times that I found that when I was thinking of like what's what's a way to teach this to someone who wants to make it be a, have a successful night. This is the way because it's really easy. Okay, to this, I'm going to add just a touch of the pasta water. Real, what I'm doing is just almost 
when you're doing pastry, you, you know, you're tempering the eggs yeah. with the hot water. It's like an insurance policy to make sure that the eggs don't scramble. That's really smart. Your pasta's really hot. And the eggs are cold or even yeah. room temperature. You're trying to bring, the, bring that egg mix a closer temperature to the pasta. Well, you won't be successful. Most pastas I would put in here at 80% with the sauce and cook them in here. Not this one. This has to be almost done because we're not going to cook this cheese mixture. This is going to be happening <laughs> off fire, OK? So I have this on just really low. I think my pasta is actually perfect. I'm going to put the pasta right into here. If there's any residual um, water, it's fine. So what I'm trying to do is just get all that juice out of there in here. So we're going to take this off the fire. The pasta's cooked. Now we're going to add some generous grinds of pepper. And I say generous, I mean generous, OK? Well, it means the carbon from the coal yes. miners, you know, in Italy that would come home and need a quick, you know, obviously uh, affordable, hearty dinner in the bits of coal would come off and drop into the pasta. And that's how it got its name. Wow. Did you know that guy? That is um, just an amazing soliloquy. It's a true story. OK, so right, gonna, Alex, concur. Yeah. I'm going to put yeah. this in here. And it's off the fire, OK? So it's not going to heat. And I'm just tossing it like this. Oh. And everything is just coming together in a beautiful way. Remember, we're not cooking this. The egg's cooking itself. And the little bit of insurance policy we took out with the hot water and the pasta water is really working magic. Now, if this gets too thick, you just add a touch of pasta water. Pasta water. Yeah. It's like it's like such a fantastic. That's amazing. It's just a touch. I don't and think I love the pecorino and the parm combo. Now, I haven't added a lot of salt to this because that pancetta, it's salty. Okay. I just want to look. Pecorino what? Romano. Oh. Carbonara. Classic, simple, inexpensive, and tasty. Touch of extra virgin olive oil on top. Not needed, but really. So that's about as close as you get to the real one with a little addition of the garlic. The garlic is actually not That was what I was going to ask. That's okay. not very traditional. But Shall we? Look at how luxurious and creamy that is without any cream. The bucatini is a real structure to it. All right. What you taste is pepper, pork, excellence. All it really needed was the correct pasta, the correct cooking in the pasta and the pasta water, and you're done. 